father and son. Stressful moment. Dinner <laughs> table conversation tonight. Could go either way. 18 laps in the books. Simmons Plains Raceway. Golf Western Oils. TCM and a pair of Tasmanian legends on the front row. Bowers on the outside. Young Adam Garwood on the inside will get point through oh. to Jared McLeod takes the front splitter off the VB Commodore. Took the shortcut. Did not work. Got penalised for it. Lots of virtual racing lately. That's definitely a hold penalty for him. And some damage to fix on the Commodore. But Garwood leads them down the hill towards that famous hairpin. Johnson up to third. Gets in front of Hansford. We might finally get to see how this XD Falcon goes in a battle for the race lead. And was there something that went wrong for Hansford there? Either a misshift or something? Because, look, Cameron Tilly has absolutely blown by in that Valiant. And it, it may have even started, I'd need to see a replay, Richard, but it may have started as they came through Thunder Alley. That Tirana was quite sideways, quite loose. He's got his hands full here. Just looked like he grabbed a brake, locked a brake going into turn six with Cameron Tilly, the valiant pacer in front. That car started life with six cylinders. It found an extra two along the journey, and now it's got easily as much horsepower as any other car in the field. One lap down, Garwood, Bow Johnson. Interesting to watch the difference in braking. Bow's car is lighter than Garwood, so it can go deeper under brakes, carry a little bit more speed into the corner. sound of a supercar and taking you back very briefly to the true blue falcon of his old man many years ago dick johnson great stuff i love how it taps into that history back up in front john bauer edging closer to garwood he's put some good sectors together fastest in the first sector john bauer will this be the race where he clicks over chalks up number 100 fastest in the middle sector as well intense little battle you heard from Stephen Johnson before the race. He talked about how they're nursing the brakes and how early he lifted off the throttle going down to the hairpin. Quite a lot of coast before he got to that middle pedal. So it is quite a long distance for these cars. 18 laps around Simmons Plains Raceway. So you do need to conserve brakes in these cars because they're so heavy. You want to have something left at the end if you're in a battle. If you get to the last two laps and you're trying to get the lead, but you've got no middle pedal, you're not going to win the motor race. So a little bit of conservation there. If Ryan Hansford had a drama on the opening lap, it's cleared up. Well, I think he just got offline, Rusty, and there was maybe a missed gear yeah, there and yeah. was compromised for a little bit, but back up to speed now and really putting the pressure on Stephen Johnson. I may not have finished the point, but it, as he came through Thunder Alley for the first time, maybe just on cold rubber, it, it got real sort of sideways and loose and up against the arm car. Whether it actually made contact, I'm not sure, but he certainly was busy. That's, that's for sure much ground he's given up to Johnson there he was right behind Stevie J on the run to the hairpin but now getting caught up by that valiant pacer which is equivalently very quick in a straight line Cameron Tilly behind the wheel fastest lap of the race for our race leader 56 5 6 wonder if we might see a lap record go today Rusty these conditions are just about bang on not much of a breeze overcast conditions it's about seven or eight degrees cooler than it was yesterday these are perfect, perfect track conditions for punching out very fast lap times. Over the history of this class, some of the front-running competitors have changed machines, but over the years, I can recall him, I think, even being in a in support categories to truck racing and the like. The Tillys have been very, very loyal to Valiant, haven't they? Especially Cameron. Yeah. That car has had more TCM races than just about any other in the series history. And we touched on before, it's had a couple of iterations. It became famous, and so too the driver, because it used to run the Hemi 6, the four-litre famous Hemi 6, and it would scream, but it was always 200 horsepower down sure, on the Sure, it did sound sweet, though. It did, so it, it handled well, it stopped well, really punched above its weight, but just didn't quite have the firepower to go with the Mustangs and Camaros when it came down to an arm wrestle for the race lead. So what did Cameron do? He found a Chrysler V8, put it in, it's out of a NASCAR, and away he goes. And the thing's now got somewhere in the vicinity of 680 horsepower and it can keep up with the cars that have had so much development and have got so much grunt in this category. For our eagle-eyed viewers watching on the, the channels of Seven, you would have seen Stephen Johnson then just ensure that he had brake pressure, brake pedal pressure for that very important stop down at turn four. The old confident... Oh, he's oh, off no. the road. He's off the road. Is it mechanical? It's oh. definitely mechanical. There's a wheel missing. That's broken the rim. The centre, yeah. So it's torn the centre out of that wheel rim. On the exit of the hairpin will go safety car. That car stranded in a perilous position. Yeah, the entire middle of that wheel ring's been 
torn out and I would imagine still attached to the hub on the car. Wow, you just, it's not something you often see, is it? I wonder if that was down to some contact somewhere that actually caused it to break or if it was an inherent issue in that rim that just threw fatigue and trying to put near on 700 horsepower to the ground in a 1500 kilo car. Let's have a look. So exiting turn four out of the hairpin. We wait for the blue car. So yeah, Ooh. just saw it, caught it through the middle of the shot as he was in the middle of the corner. The car went very, very sideways as the wheel came off. So it's the right rear that's gone missing. Oh, here we go. There it is. Did a really nice job to keep it out of the wall, Rusty. Very. Well. What we might do, we'll grab a commercial break here, Richard, from Simmons Plains. Garwood leading the way. Yellow flags on display. We'll come back with more with the Gulf Western Oil Touring Car Masters in just a few. Beautiful conditions at Boost Mobile Race Tasmania here at the stunning Simmons Plains Raceway. We're just 25 minutes outside of Launceston and we're in the midst of a race in the Gulf Western Oils Touring Car Masters. We're under safety car for this. Now, what? Now we saw to the left of screen there, Cameron Tilly. Didn't look from the onboard like there was... Let's have a look here. Let's have a listen as well. So, no contact from what we could see, Rusty, but the right front wheel has sheared itself off the hub. It's pulled itself off the car and departed, and Stephen Johnson is stranded and being recovered, and we can jump down into the lane with Jessica Day. Nathan Hearn, we have tracked you down in pit lane. You're on double duties this weekend. You've got S5000 and Trans Am, and you had, we've just come off the bat back of an awesome battle in Trans Am, but it didn't go quite how you wanted. Can you talk us through the, uh, the race we saw just now? Yeah, look, it was good. Um, you know, we haven't had the car pace of Aaron all weekend, but um, once I got in front of him, I knew I sort of had the had the race in, in my hands, and you know, it was up to me to either win or lose it. And unfortunately, I lost it. I um, you know, mis-shifted coming down into the last corner, the second last corner there, and um, let him straight through. And Aaron's a, he's a real precise driver, so once he gets in front of you, he's, he's generally going to take off. So um, it all come down to really the start on the first race. Um, I think I'm just going to have to try and get him there, and, and hopefully I can stay in front of him then. Um, yeah, look, we'll see what happens. Yeah, big race still to come this afternoon. And you're stepping into the S5000 very soon. You'll be starting from fifth, which is a little bit of a saving grace after yesterday's drama. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, yesterday was just a bit of a rookie experience um, with the cars, to be honest. Um, just getting used to the aero and, and having to drive with aero. Uh, it's not something I've obviously been used to racing TA2. We've got nothing on them things. So to hop into these, it's, it's definitely something you're going to learn. And whilst doing double, double duties, it's probably slowing down my learning a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've just got to pick up my game and, and do a bit better today. So, um, you know, at least I'm not starting off the back uh, like I thought I was. I'm starting off P5. So I'm, I'm still ahead of all Jimmy and um, Tommy and, and Joey. So it'll be a. I'll at least be able to hopefully hold them behind me and try and reclaim some points back for championship. Um, I still want to try and get a good result in the championship this year, but um, I think that's just going to have to come from later on in the year when I start to learn the car a bit more. It's definitely a big weekend for you, but we'll be watching closely. Best of luck. Thank you. Cheers. And just while the uh, the great team here at Simmons Plains get that car of Stephen Johnson, I mean, priceless piece of machinery on the uh, on the flat board, flatbed. Sadly, we've gone red flag, Richard. So we have. So we're just waiting on confirmation from Motorsport Australia Race Control about how this is going to play out and whether they've got to a point where they can even award championship points for this race. You need to get to 75% before generally it can be classified a race, though there are scenarios where if you get 50% they can look at awarding half points. So that'll be a decision for the race officials of the meeting. But yeah, they've gone red flag now. A lengthy recovery and... and you have to be so careful. These cars are so valuable. They're so beautifully made. There's no other real damage to Stephen Johnson's car aside from the fact it's missing a wheel. But you can see how low they sit to the ground. You don't want to cause any more collateral damage dragging it up onto the flatbed. And it will be a lengthy repair. So the only option was to red flag this race. Race two of the Gulf Western Oils Touring Car Masters Series. And we thank Gulf Western supported this great championship into its second year. Uh, this is the results as they stand. As I said, we'll get confirmation for you of how this all plays out. But Garwood and Bow, if it's counted as a race, Bow still on 99 going into the finale. Uh, Ryan Hansford in third there. Solid points for the multi Spares Racing Tirana today. Uh, Marcus Akanovic got some ground there too and the XD Falcon. Yeah, he certainly did. Good, uh, good outing 
for Jim Polisina today. Greg Garwood, who we were talking about just a moment ago, finishes in position eight ahead of Paul Freestone and Mark King for White Line Racing, rounding out the top ten. Bit of damage for Jared McLeod's Commodore. Hopefully, he's been working some serious late nights on that machine. Hopefully, he's got the parts to repair it. Correct, and Stephen Johnson right at the very back. So for the final race of the weekend. We'll see the XD Fountain hopefully charging from behind. Here's the highlights of the seven laps of racing we got. Wheel to wheel battle between Adam Garwood and John Bowers. They went into turn two. Terrific scrap. And then, oh, Hansford got the fence there on the exit of turn three. Didn't catch that on the opening lap. The car was sideways. There was no contact with Johnson, though. That's what caused him to drop back on that opening lap, Rusty. We were trying to unpick that, and he got gobbled up by Cameron Tilly as well. So, yeah, we were concerned about whether it actually made contact with the wall, and then the miss shift or what appeared to be something like that at turn four. So just sixes and sevens to kick things off in that uh, in the opening part of this, uh, of this race for the Touring Car Masters. But in the end, the Garwood name on top, and we wait another race for John Bow. We can see uh, Jessica Dane standing by there, and we'll take you straight there right now. Well, that wasn't quite the race that we were hoping for, but um, how was it from your perspective when you were under greens? Yeah, it was all good. The car was starting to come on there, so it was going to be a lot stronger towards the end of the race. But um, you don't want to win a race like that, but you always take it. So, um, yeah, looking forward to race three. Yeah, was there anything that you can work on on the car from the uh, from the limited run that you got just now, or is it more a case of kind of just repeating it for this afternoon? Yeah, pretty much just repeat it. It's a few little changes we can make, but um, nothing too bad. So we'll try and repeat it in race three and go from there. Well, uh, we'll be watching closely. Best of luck. Sweet. Thank you. Richard Crail will stick around in commentary. He's a little excited because S5000 is about to hit the track. The Gold Star, the race for the Australian Drivers' Championship, coming your way in just a few moments, live here on a massive day at Simmons Plains.